I grew up in Murray. My grandmother had a 25-acre farm. We just spent weekends down there, and she had a big garden, and it was just wonderful. We did dangerous things. We climbed up in silos that were really tall that we probably could have fallen off. And we went in caves, like dirt caves that were in the back, down the hill from my grandmother's house. I never worried about anyone ever harming us. I didn't really drive in high school. I had an older sister that drove us everywhere, so it was really nice to have my own car. It was a 74 Camaro. It was maroon with a black top. The payments were something like 63 or $67 a month. And um, I got the car, and I, I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. I was always washing it in their big, long driveway, and I just, I just loved it. I had gotten off work and decided I'd head over to the mall. It was dark and kind of a drizzly night. I came up to a bookstore, and that's when a man approached me. I think he introduced himself as being a police officer, and his name was Officer Rosalind. He said, is your license plate number? And he read off my license plate number. I said, yes, that's my license plate number. And he said, we caught someone trying to break into your car. He asked me if I could go out to the car with him and see if anything had been taken. Uh, we got out to my car and I opened the door and I could see nothing was missing. At that point, I could kind of smell alcohol in his breath. I said, do you have some kind of ID or something I can see? I. I just wasn't really sure about him, but he showed me some identification. I probably was trying to be nice. I was trying to do the right thing, and I was trying to be a good person, and he was an authority figure. He said, they've taken him down to the police station. If you could come down and fill out this complaint against him, we have him. So I said I would. We walked over to his car, and it was a, a beat-up Volkswagen. Right when I was in the car, I knew I had made a mistake. Suddenly, he just pulled the car over, and it kind of went up on the side of the curb. And that's when I started absolutely freaking out. I remember screaming at him, what are you doing? This isn't the police station. What are you doing? And he wasn't saying anything. He wasn't answering me and I could tell he just changed. I remember him pulling out a gun and him saying to me, I'll blow your head off. And I remember thinking, go ahead, I'm, I'm you know, I'll die right here. I think back then you were told not to fight off your attacker. If you were being raped, if you tried to fight him off, it'd make him mad just to, you know, let it happen. And I was angry at him for him thinking he could do something like that to me. And I remember thinking, my parents are never going to know what happened to me. I might have never been found. I just, that was my feeling was to fight. And I just had to get away with all my strength. I opened the passenger side and just fell out onto the, to the street. And he came out after me out the passenger side. I remember feeling a crowbar in his hand. He was trying to hit me over the head with it and struggling for a while. And then a car came along. I ran out into the street and just threw open their door and just jumped in on him. I really don't know how I got away. I was so small and I just think I had this strength that just came from somewhere to get away from me.